Hello folks, today I'm going to be taking a look at Labyrinth, the adventure game, and this comes from River Horse. It is a role-playing game, and it's based on the um, film from the 80s of Labyrinth. And if you've not seen it, stop this video, go and watch it, and uh, you can come back to us when you've done that. Two hours later. We good? Yeah? Okay. Smashing. Grand. So, Labyrinth. Labyrinth was a fantasy film from the 80s starring David the Goblin King Bowie and Jennifer I Want My Brother to Go Away Forever Conley. Their performances were um, excellent to say the least. The Goblin King, played by Bowie, uh, span out so many wonderful quotes, um, not least of which, you remind me of the babe. This has been brought to us by Ben Milton uh, and Jack Caesar, who wrote the rules. And the book itself is, I can only describe as a labour of love, from the internal um, labyrinth inside the flaps to the actual design and layer of the book. So first things first, little cutaway for the dice. This is delightful. Anybody who, anybody who had a book at any point when they were younger, always thought about having things hidden in it. It crops up in games and the like. Um, so actually having the dice secreted inside it is just a, a joy for me. We have an owl. Actually, we have two. So the owls live on the ones. Um, nothing to do with Twin Peaks, but there you go. So just that little touch in itself, I think, is just absolutely gorgeous. Ooh, and they roll particularly well. As far as the book itself goes, it's a, um, a force de triomphe, I believe they say. The game is a, a role-playing game, but it contains work by the likes of Brian Froud, who, if you're not aware of him, shame on you, but he was the artist responsible for most of the Labyrinth Goblins. Um, so much of his vision went into what Jim Henson's workshop actually produced. This is uh, broken up in several sections. So the first thing you get is the rules. Um, the artwork throughout is sort of these pen and pastels or pen and watercolor sort of um, pictures. And it's so evocative of the labyrinth. I absolutely am delighted by it. Um, especially if we bring the bookmark in. The bookmark's also like a quick reference sheet and you can see Jennifer Connolly's character there at the ball. But you, you get things like the quick reference gives you your difficulty, so no need to roll. If it's only difficulty one up to, it's not fair. Life's seldom fair. Um, how many dice? Roll one dice normal, two dice of improved, two dice of hindered, one dice of both, and it tells you what you need to get. And on the back side, we have the Goblin King and he gives you your same progression. So it does flow in a similar way to the actual film. Um, the first thing you get is how to get started with it. And like I say, there's absolutely... The illustrations, the work that has gone into this is just mind-blowing. I have a book by Brian Proud on the... Not on the Labyrinth Goblins, but just on Goblins. Um, and I, I adore it. And this, seeing the sort of the pencil work and that sort of um, watercoloured artwork or acrylic artwork that looks like if this wasn't actually part of the labyrinth concept art, then it's been done after the fact and follows so closely to it. It's just incredibly evocative. But it explains what an adventure game is or a role playing game if you've never played it before. What do you need? So the book itself, the uh, two dice with or with an optional owl, pencils, papers, and then the character sheet and the Goblin King sheet. So your GM also gets a sheet. Um, these can be photocopied out of the book here, or you can pick them up from um, River Horse's website so you can get them online. It then goes into how to actually play a game. 
So the Goblin King needs to read most of this book, at least ahead of the actual players. If you've GM before, then you'll know the rough idea that you need to actually build your adventure and you need to know where you're planning on going. Your actual players don't need to know a lot of what's in this book. Um, it's nice that they have read the initial starting chapter so they, they get an idea of what they need to do when they generate their character. I would actually just put them down in front of the film and let them watch that because it does play out an awful lot like uh, a role-playing game which is part of what the authors have, have mentioned when they actually come to do this. But they do have it broken down. If you've never played a, an adventure game or an RPG before, so the first thing to do is relax. Suggest putting it on the TV and finding the biggest and comfiest chair you can, curling up with the book, get ready, and you're about to take your first step in becoming the Goblin King. Um, read the rules, read ahead. That's very important. Uh, knowing where you're due to go and what your characters are going to face in advance is always handy. But then you create your characters and run the adventure. So the characters themselves, um, you've got a choice of various kith and kin. So whether they're dwarves, fairies, goblins, knights of yore, horned beast or worms, the jobs that they actually have and the tools that they would have for them because they are, after all, working within the labyrinth itself. It then gives you the various traits um, and a bit of a, a paragraph about the creature in question. Humans are an oddity in the labyrinth. Most humans enter from our world and few stay long. A human character is considered strange and exotic by the denizens of the labyrinth, and some may even react to hostility to their presence. Here we have the likes of the Horned Beast and the Worm, and they look absolutely fantastic. And you get these little quotes throughout from the film itself. So, Rock's friends from Ludo, who uh, I believe he said that after they were going through the bog of stench, something like that. Anyway, he, he brings rocks to the fore so that they can uh, help them escape. When you hit this point, you've more or less completed your character creation. And then after this, the rest of the book belongs to the Goblin King or Queen themselves, the person who's going to be running the game for you. Um, they explain the actual concepts of the mechanics of the game, how to go ahead with running your game. And then the most important thing is this player's tip page, as far as I'm concerned. So player's tips, be creative, feeling is fun, wait your turn. For new groups in particular, this is a big one. You will nearly always have somebody in the group who is very vocal. They'll start telling you what they're going to do. And then when you get your turn to tell the, uh, the games master, the Goblin King, the GM, DM, whoever it is, they'll talk over you as well. Um, so sometimes the Shire members of the group may have trouble getting a word in. That's very important for all groups, but also very important if you're a new games master. If you've not run a game before, be aware of this. Um, because sometimes your players won't wait their turn and it's up to you to tell them to shut up and you'll come back to them in a minute because other people have to have a chance to speak. You're crafting these stories and adventures together and this is, I think, possibly the best. And I would treble underline this. Um, it's not a competition, it's not. You're storytelling together. So, after your initial character generation, the rest of the book onwards, of which there are much, is the, um, the Goblin King's domain. So it explains about the chapters and the exploration. The whole point of this is to explore the labyrinth. If you've watched the film, and you have by now because I made you, uh, you'll know there are points in it where she makes a choice whether she asks the helping hands to drop her to the bottom of the pit rather than take her to the top or you know how she gets past the guards one who always lies and one who tells the truth all of these things and you've looked at them and you've probably thought i could do better well now's your chance and if 
you're um, playing as either the, the player characters or the Goblin King, you have a real chance to explore and play in the realm that uh, Jim Henson had come up with for Labyrinth. So you get a set of chapters. As you move between the chapters, you get uh, a chance for people to progress. So they can move beyond it. You can go beyond things like the Ubliettes and the Gatekeepers. It's harder to get back and sometimes they'll have to um, role to actually return. The idea of the labyrinth is you're always moving forward. They shouldn't be retreading the same places they've been in. If I skip on a bit here, because we have multiple chapters, so you start with the stone walls and then to the hedge mage maze. Uh, the lands of yore, where you'll find the knights, goblin city and the castle. And each of these is beautifully illustrated and has a very simple setup so in the alcove in the hedge maze stands a booth occupied by a wizened old woman. A huge banner across the front reads, the fortune's told for good or ill. And the moment she sees you, she starts beckoning you over. Come and sit, sit, sit. Do you want to know your future? Of course you do. And I can see it clear as crystal. And then you get this um, D66 fortune list. So if I was to roll this, I would get 14 or a 41. 14 would be, I see you preparing for a great feast. And 41 is, I see you on fire. And then it's up to the Goblin King to spin these fortunes out and see how they're going to go, how they're perceived, and up to then the characters, how they interact with her. Um, if I go a bit further, you can hit Goblin City. The bustle of Goblin City is constant deafening, with goblins peddling strange wares on every corner, shouting to be heard. And though every denizen is a goblin, there are no two alike in manner or appearance. This is very true, especially if you've seen any of Brian Froud's work. If you haven't, you should definitely go and have a look, see if you can track down some of his books on Amazon. They are a joy to behold. As people wind their way through the, gab uh, through the, the labyrinth, they'll get closer to the Goblin King and the stories you and your group will make um, will define and structure how your labyrinth is, how it's different um, or similar to uh, what Jennifer had to go through until eventually you reach the castle itself. And you'll hit the final setup, including the throne room. Apart from, I'm not going to dwell too much on this, apart from the actual chapters for the book you have a toolkit allowing you to create your own beastry uh, so you can fill your labyrinth with specific people in advance if there are places you want or know that your group are going to visit you can have those defined you can have your alarms and traps the goblins themselves and at the very end after your index you have this afterward Spent some time trying to think of an appropriate afterward, and these can be tricky. We wanted to encapsulate our feelings towards Jim Henson and Brian Froud for their first imagining of a vibrant, fantastical world. It also needed to speak of David Bowie, Jennifer Connelly, Terry Jones, and everyone else who brought that imagination to life. And lastly, you, the player, be a goblin king or brave adventurer. We hope you had as much fun in the labyrinth as we did. It all seems a bit obvious when everything else is written out like that. The perfect afterword, thanks. Which I think sums it up quite nicely. The gallery are stills from the film. So there we have the labyrinth itself in all its wondrous glory. Ludo, Sarah, Sir Didymus. Hoggle should be in here somewhere. Goblins, knights on patrol and worms, fairies the doors of truth and lies it just evokes so many memories and there's toby the child who should be left behind where's waldo people ask well apparently he's trapped in an mcs here picture i have to say i would never have thought of the labyrinth as a role-playing game and i'm very glad that the people at river horse have because just 
going back through this book, I've seen so many things that are so evocative uh, of my youth. Uh, that is just absolutely stunning. And it really does make a fantastic setting, especially for people who aren't au fait with uh, RPGs. They're, they're not played a lot of role playing games in the past. It's a very simple way of getting into the whole genre. Uh, it's a great way to spend an afternoon with people. If you're of a certain age and you remember Labyrinth as a film, then this has got that beautiful retro feel. If you're not, if you're younger and you've not played or not seen the Labyrinth, it's a fantastic place to explore. Um, because you don't need to know the film, you don't need to know anything about their journey to try and rescue Toby and what happens in the labyrinth because all of that can be written new by you and your friends as you start to play through these games. Um, the quality is absolutely fantastic um, even when you've got the dust cover off the hardback book with this let me see if I can pick that up. There we go. So the uh, the labyrinth and this sort of UV detailing on the cover. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Um, so yes, that is River Horse Games, the labyrinth adventure game. Or the labyrinth for short. Uh, I definitely recommend anybody who's ever role played picks it up. Anybody who's ever watched The Labyrinth should definitely own it. And if anybody is looking to get into an RPG in a very simple way and is wondering about the best way to do it, there are a lot of games out there. But I think this is, is a uniquely beautiful way of doing it from the, um, the adventures inside it to the actual presentation of it. It's, it's a thing of beauty. So that's my two cents on The Labyrinth. Um, I'm going to move on, folks. If you have any questions, drop them below, and I'll see you again soon. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe, and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.